So uh, the first story I wanted to go into um, happened uh, early in the month, and that was the uh, Orion Ascent Abort 2 test. And uh, Orion is the, uh, the crew vehicle which is being developed by Lockheed Martin here in, uh, in Denver for NASA to carry astronauts uh, to the moon. Uh, the current uh, stated plan is by 2024. Um, and, uh, and then on to, uh, to deeper in the solar system in the next decade after that. And uh, so they've been going very methodically through all of the testing. And this test was all about uh, how you would pull the capsule away from a failing launch vehicle, either near the launch pad or during flight, uh, up to uh, the point where um, you would just uh, separate instead of, instead of actually trying to pull away. And so the way this works, uh, this is just a, a schematic of the system. What they chose here as a, uh, a launch vehicle from here to here, is the first stage of what used to be called the Peacemaker uh, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, the MX system, which was retired, oh gosh, about 15 years ago, I believe. But we still have a lot of the, uh, the hardware left behind. And so the, the uh, first stage of the MX provided sufficient thrust to, uh, to launch the Orion capsule up to about uh, um, a little bit past the, the speed of sound. And what they wanted to do was, uh, was to carry it to the, the uh, spot in its uh, liftoff profile where it was under the maximum pressure from the atmosphere. It's called maximum dynamic pressure. And so that's the most difficult uh, scenario for being able to separate the, the crew and the capsule from a, a launch vehicle. And so this entire structure here is the, uh, the launch abort system. And uh, this is a, a closer up view of it. Um, and then the Orion capsule itself sits inside this uh, payload fairing. And so the, uh, the launch abort system has three different sets of, uh, of rocket motors on board. The first are uh, these guys right here, and those provide the thrust to actually pull the, the vehicle away and separate it uh, several thousand uh, meters from the, uh, the launch vehicle itself. The second part is up here near the nose, and they have eight attitude control motors. And so those are what steer the entire uh, stack when it's being pulled away. And then the final uh, uh, set of engines are four jettison motors. And so once you've pulled the, the uh, capsule away, you want to pull this entire uh, launch abort system and the payload fairing away from the capsule that allows the capsule to, uh, to stabilize and then uh, pop its parachutes and you land in the, the ocean near the launch site. And so here's the, uh, the hardware getting ready. So this is a, uh, a mock-up of the Orion uh, crew vehicle, the Orion capsule. Um, and this is the launch abort system. And so then this fits down on top of the, the capsule. And here's uh, the final stage of, uh, this is the, uh, the, the peacemaker or peacekeeper missile. And, uh, and then this is the launch abort system. And you can see the, the capsule sort of buried in the, in the structure there. And here it is sitting on the, the pad. And just for scale, um, here's some, some workers on cherry pickers. So you can see this really is a, a very large uh, 
uh, vehicle. And uh, ultimately, this will sit on the top of the space launch system, which will be the largest rocket that has been produced since the Saturn V in the Apollo days. It's actually more powerful and, and slightly larger than the Saturn V. But we haven't launched the first one of those yet. That'll be uh, hopefully by the end of next year. But uh, nonetheless, this was a, a milestone that they needed to to verify for the, uh, before they could move forward with, uh, with an actual test launch. And so here's the entire vehicle ready to go. And this is just an artist's uh, drawing of, of how this would work. So they launch, they get up to about uh, uh, four or five kilometers in altitude, a little bit faster than Mach 1. And then this is a schematic of how this all works. So here's the rocket going into the floor. Here's the abort uh, system. Uh, rockets firing, that carries, it separates right here. So that carries everything off. And then the uh, attitude control motors actually flip the, uh, the stack so that the, uh, the capsule is going heat shield first and that gets it in a stable uh, configuration. They separate the shroud and the abort system and then the capsule falls away and pops its parachutes and, and uh, lands with the crew uh, multiple kilometers. Well, it depends on, on when the system would fire, but it's off the coast of, of Florida would be the, uh, the expected outcome. And this is that uh, final step where the, the shroud and the, the launch abort system separates from the Orion capsule itself. Okay, Nine, so here's the four, real thing. This was three, on uh, two, one, uh, early two, July. Three. Minotaur launch vehicle is carrying the AA-2 launch aboard system for a full stress test. to keep in mind here is that the capsule itself does not have parachutes on it in this test. It's just designed to test the escape system. So everything ends up falling into the ocean. We will see the abort. So there's the uh, abort. Motors just fire. Fire is one and two. Discharge both sides. Pitching for pressure. Good control. And then this is where it does the, the flip so that it gets in the proper orientation if it did have parachutes to, uh, to deploy them properly. And then there's the, uh, the jettison system and there's the capsule falling away. Good power enabled. So there's the, the uh, shroud and the uh, escape system tumbling away. So there um, goes the LAS. Tumbling a bit, Orion coming yeah, down. A bit. Everything data looking rebroadcast. good so And there's the, uh, Recall there the, are no the rocket motor test falling. Test and the data then there's have the been deployed and the capsule. vehicle is no longer transmitting data. TC will call test complete. <clears throat> and we're looking now at the Orion. That data is being written. We're about to get ejection of those EDRs. So they had onboard uh, data recorders. Uh, I think there were eight of them and they would eject two of them, one off each side, um, every 10 seconds as, as the test was proceeding. And so that ensured that if there was a communications problem, they had something like 900 channels of telemetry coming back, that they, they had good copies on these data recorders. And the data recorders have been used on previous flights where they're designed to float and they have little beepers on them, uh, radio beacons that 
the uh, recovery crews can find. And so uh, from what I've heard, they found all eight of them. Yes? I thought it would be neat to have the parachutes. Well, it would have been neat to have the parachutes, but it also would have been much more expensive. This way, it's just, it's got the right form. It's got some systems on board that would be what triggers the abort system, but uh, they don't need to make it so that it could support people. Uh, it, well, you'll see a video here. They end up impacting the ocean at something like 500 kilometers per hour. It's, it's free falling from uh, uh, about four or five kilometers up. And so here's some still images, uh, just repeating what we had. So there was the liftoff. It was shortly after sunrise, so very nice lighting. And here was where the, uh, there's the, the booster separated from the uh, abort system. And uh, this looks disturbingly like uh, the images from the Challenger accident. But there's the, uh, the abort system, there's the booster, and there's the uh, Orion capsule. And so this was just before impact of the, uh, um, the escape system. And it, it came down a couple of kilometers offshore. Here it looks like it's about to land in somebody's backyard, but uh, <laughs> not quite. And that was the splash that it made when it, uh, when it impacted. Actually, there's two of them here. One of those was the capsule. The other was the launch abort system. And then they got much better coverage of the, uh, of the booster stage. So here it's uh, coming in. And again, it's, I mean, the, the perspective is a little off because it's a long telephoto lens. So it's, uh, it's several kilometers offshore. So there's the impact. And here's pieces of it, uh, so it, it did not uh, fare very well with its encounter with the ocean. But the test was, uh, was very successful. They got all the data that they, uh, they had hoped for, and uh, it's going to take many months to go through all of these 900 channels of, uh, of telemetry to verify that everything worked the way that they expected it to. But uh, this is... A major uh, milestone in the in the development of Orion. So the next big um, test will be its first flight test, which will be late next year or possibly early 2021. And that will be. Uh, we'll talk more about that in future programs. But the the plan is the uh, uh, this first test flight. It will send the the complete system to orbit the moon and then return back to the Earth. Uh, it'll be a, essentially a, a dry run of what the first human uh, crewed mission will be, which uh, hopefully will happen in, uh, in 2023.